In this video, we'll be taking apart the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the outer screen, as well as the back cover, to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry them off. I prefer to use a hairdryer to apply heat since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. The plastic cover over the screen connector needs to be removed. Now the screen cable can be disconnected from the main board. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Here's a look at the other side. At this point, 16 Phillips screws need to be removed. The bottom battery cable can now be disconnected. This is the wireless charging coil, as well as the NFC antenna. And this is the speaker assembly. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the folding screen. And it's routed through this flip to the other, from the openings in the center of each flip. But there is a cure in place rubber gasket on each side, so if you needed to replace that flex cable, you'd have to cut out that rubber gasket. There are two additional Phillips screws holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we see the primary microphone located over here, and next to that is the charger port with the red rubber gasket around it. Here's a look at the other side. The screen cable for the folding screen is located over here, 
which is adhered with some adhesive to the back of the frame. So if you needed to replace the folding screen, you'd have to remove the back cover and remove the screws in the speaker assembly, as well as the subboard to give you access to the screen cable, at which point you would heat up the side where the folding screen is at and pry the plastic border off, as well as apply more heat and pry the folding screen off from the frame. I won't be prying this screen off from the frame since there's a chance of damaging the screen by prying it off. Also, if you want to properly reassemble this phone if you pry the folding screen off, you're going to have to use the original adhesives which are made for the phone, since those will properly adhere the screen to the frame and won't let the screen move when you're folding and closing the screen. Because if you don't properly install the screen, as well as the adhesive and the screen moves when you close it, you can crack or damage the folding screen. So as far as these folding screens go, I recommend buying one that has the frame pre-attached. Even though those are more expensive, they'll definitely be easier to replace, as well as prevent you from damaging the replacement screen if you don't apply the adhesive correctly or if you don't have the correct adhesive. As far as the batteries go, both of the batteries have pull pouches to help you pry them off. Here's a look at the 2870 milliamp hour battery. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, apply some heat and pry it off. And this is the 5G millimeter wave antenna. Not all versions of this phone will have this 5G millimeter wave antenna, since not all regions use the millimeter wave technology for 5G. The ones which don't have this antenna primarily use the sub 6 gigahertz 5G. This flex cable leads for the LED flash, as well as the secondary microphone. Here's a look at the other side, where you can see the secondary microphone. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, and next to that is the 50 megapixel primary. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's another microphone on this corner, and the SIM reader is located over here. Also, this board is a dual layer design board. Looking at the other side, we can see the flex cables for the cameras which are connected to the main board and those can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity and ambient light sensor is located here and there's graphite film on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once that's been peeled back, we see a thermal pad on top of the RAM which is seated on top of the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. This is the ambient light sensor on the back and this flex cable is for the power button and fingerprint sensor on the side. If you need to replace that, you just lift up and pull out the Zerber gasket from inside the frame, which would also release the power button, and then you'd be able to push it inside of the frame and pull it out.
This is the 1130 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed, we have a better look at the vapor chamber, which covers pretty much the entire battery, as well as the motherboard, and the vapor chamber helps to transfer heat. The flex cable for the volume key is located here. If you need to replace that, just gently peel it off from the frame and pull out and remove the black plastic bracket from the slit inside of the frame. The 10 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket. So if you need to replace that, you would have to use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to carefully cut out the rubber gasket around it and pull it out. As for the earpiece speaker, which is located next to that, it's just held on with some adhesive. So just apply some heat and gently pry it off. Also, for anyone worried about accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry, since both the rubber gaskets and filters for the microphones on the top and bottom, as well as the microphones themselves are seated above the holes, so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.